What are you reading about coronavirus? This is of great interest to me. I've been tracking it very closely for a few weeks. And I know this is topical, but I, I do think that, in a sense, uh, there's a parallel to the expression, and I'm going to butcher this, and I, I'm afraid I don't know the attribution, but that adversity doesn't build character, it reveals character. And I do think that with the, let's call it threat on one hand, panic on the other, and they're not totally separate, everything going on with coronavirus, the challenges of parsing good from bad information, reliable from unreliable information, many of the frailties in thinking or logic or meta-rationality that otherwise would go somewhat unnoticed day-to-day are becoming much more pronounced in a yes. lot of people. And many of them, and maybe present company included, are not aware <laughs> just how those things are manifesting. So how, what, are you, uh, what are you reading and how are you thinking about this, this particular coronavirus? We're speaking in very early March. Yes. And it seems to me there are several distinct episodes. One is Wuhan. There's other parts of China. There's South Korea, Japan, Singapore, northern Italy, Washington State, uh, Princess Diamond cruise ship. And the different numbers from these separate locations, they don't really add up. No. So I'm, I'm treating it like a Sherlock Holmes puzzle. Uh, how do we make sense of all of these collectively comparing them to each other? So yes, of course, there are data mistakes. But what's your theory of data mistakes where they all fit together? And I still actually don't find a way of making it add up. So I'm trying not to approach it as like a lecturer, like telling everyone, do this, don't do that, wash your hands, probably good advice, but as a kind of puzzle. And to stay open about it and see what it brings me. And uh, also see which of the responses are the best ones. So far, Singapore is looking quite good, but... You know, there's plenty of play left, so to speak. And the United States, it seems, has let the coronavirus get into its healthcare system and it did nothing about it for six weeks in what could end up being really a kind of huge crime of omission. Yeah. You know, I'm struggling with, with where to go with this because uh, you know, I, I recognize we have a large audience listening. How do you, how do you currently plan to increase the resolution on those puzzle pieces or to continue informing yourself in such a way that the picture becomes clearer and not more difficult to make out. How do, how do you think about information consumption? There's more data every day and I will write out the puzzles as I find them and try to think them through as I write them out and then get feedback. And I'm not sure where I'll arrive with this. One hopes, of course, it just goes away and the puzzles remain that, puzzles. Uh, at this point, that's seeming a bit less likely than it had been. So I'm afraid to say, I think we're going to find out more than we want to know. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that. Like, if it all remains unresolved, I can just go away and celebrate. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh Aside from, for instance, I mean, Johns Hopkins has a very good daily newsletter, which uh, I, I would consider reasonably uncharged, politically speaking. Uh, you had mentioned someone on Twitter who you follow, and I'm blanking on the name. It's Helen on, uh, Branswell. She's public health in Toronto. How do you spell that last name? Uh, it's B-R-A-N-S-W-E-L-L, -L, I believe. Are there any other particular sources of information uh, or other people you are following who you find to be reasonably level-headed about how they're approaching and analyzing this? Uh, there's four or five. I don't remember their Twitter handles by memory, but you know they're in the list of people I follow. If you just go through that, it will be pretty clear which ones they are. Okay, great. And, and we'll then I find by being out there writing about it in an open non-hysterical way. I'm just sent a flood of useful information. Yeah. And that's arguably my main source. And I don't mean to say I trust it all, but you cross-check and you think, and then you talk to people you know, and you get a bit further. Yeah.